Welcome to Calculus 1. In our first lecture, we're going to cover an introduction to calculus. All right, so this is going to be our introduction. There will be uh, several course topics introduced within this intro. And my, my goal with this is to do a very short, to the point, kind of a transition from algebra and pre-calculus, bringing us to the start of our course, Calculus 1. Now, this is not historically correct. This is not how calculus was actually developed, looking at, uh, at, at kind of the history of calculus. I encourage you to go, uh, go forth and look at that at any point through our course. We'll try to throw that in where possible, little, little tidbits. But what this is, is a very, very short to the point way to go from standard topics in our current algebra and pre-calc courses to standard uh, starting topics in a uh, university college level calculus one course. All right, so let's get into it. I wanna introduce a concrete problem. Again, this is not historically the starting problem that led to calculus. Uh, take a look at the work of Isaac Newton and Leibniz, those were the two credited with discovering or inventing calculus at the end of the 1600s. But this is a very simple problem. Our motivating problem for calculus one, what we're gonna call differential calculus, is trying to find the equation of the tangent line. So we start with basically a curve, the graph of a function, that's pre-calc ideas where you develop ideas of functions. And the equation of a line is an algebra topic. All right, so let's pick a point on this function, its graph or curve. I'll pick some random x value. We'll label it arbitrarily as x equals a. And if x equal a is a point on the graph, we go from the x-axis up to hit the curve, and that would be the point on the graph, a comma f of a. Plug your x value into the function to get the y value. All right, and this would be uh, what the tangent line looks like at that point on that function's graph or curve. Now, if you pick a different point, the tangent line might look different at a different point on the graph, but we'll just focus on this kind of standard sketch. It'll be one that I uh, often draw. All right, now we have to first ask this question, what is a tangent line? I'm gonna give you a very basic answer. This is not a complete answer, but we'll kind of get into it as we go through the course and uh, give you the real answer at some point. But we'll say, roughly speaking, a tangent line is the straight line that just touches the curve at that point. Now, we're not going to define mathematically what it means to just touch, but that will be later in our course. So if we just keep that in mind, a very loose understanding of what tangent lines are, I think this works for right now. All right, so notice that red tangent line just touches the curve. All right, now our problem is asking us to find the equation of the tangent line. Well, let's just back up and don't worry about uh, finding the equation of the tangent line. Let's just think, how would you find the equation of any line, like in your last algebra course? Well, here's one standard form for the equation of a line. Familiar point-slope form. You might also be familiar with a slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. But through this intro, we'll just focus on this one, point-slope form. All right, and the equation is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. m denotes the slope of that line x1 comma y1 are coordinates of a point on that line. So in this equation, uh, x1 and y1, or x sub 1 and y sub 1, or the subscripts, those are numerical values, the, um, the values of the coordinates of the point x comma y, x1 comma y1. The x and y without subscripts in that equation are the variables. Recall uh, every form for the equation of a line uh, contains possibly x and y variables in some combination. Okay, so this is familiar. We're going to build off of that. So let's kind of, uh, before we get to answering the tangent line problem, let's point out the, uh, the very simple ideas that we're going to build upon. And we're going to do that throughout this course in the, the lectures that I uh, do for you. 
I'll always try to point out the very simple ideas that you know that we'll be building upon. And my goal is to get you to see the simple ideas and then how that leads you to uh, current calculus topics. All right, so let's keep that in mind. Let's get to the ideas that we'll build upon from algebra and pre-calculus. All right, there's gonna be two basic results, well, one from algebra and one from pre-calculus. The first, since we're talking about finding the equation of a line, we need to know how to find the slope. And I'm sure you know this. This is just restating what you've been using a lot. Familiar slope formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, or change in y values divided by the change in x values, or rise over run. Again, not complicated, but we're gonna build off of this. So you should feel confident that what we're gonna be getting to, the new Calculus One stuff, starts from here, at least as we're looking at it through our introduction right now. All right, there is a um, kind of a problem we're gonna get, gonna get into. I wanna point out that if you're gonna use the slope formula, it requires you to have two points, x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. All right, well, remind, I'll remind you of that in a little bit. The second idea we're gonna use coming from your uh, standard pre-calculus course, where you were probably introduced to functions and function notation like f of x here, is that the function values or output values represent y values or y coordinates. Again, not complicated. This is something that you spend a lot of time on going through your pre-calc course. If we go with a very simple function here, f of x, first that's not f times x, those parentheses are function notation, the parentheses surround your input variable, x, and here the function f of x, we're defining it to be x squared plus one. We're just, just using this as a concrete example. All right, so let's pick a random x value. Let's say we go with x equals two, and if we plug that into the function, if the input value is two, replace all x's with two, we get the output value five. Again, very straightforward. What we can conclude from this is that the point two comma five, x equals two, y equals five, that is a point on the graph of that function. Now you know the graph of that function, x squared plus one, it's a parabola shifted up one unit, Recall from pre-calculus, the plus one uh, causes a uh, shift up vertically by one unit. So we have here a point two comma five. Five was the output value or function value. All right, so if we just go a little more abstractly here, if I plug in some x value a, we get the output value f of a. We could then order that x comma y as the ordered pair a comma f of a. So here we're seeing it is the function values that are the uh, y values or y coordinates. Now we're gonna introduce some notation which you might have encountered, probably ideally would have encountered in your pre-calc course, something where you have a plus h being plugged in. Uh, this would probably have been very early on in your pre-calculus course. So if we plug in instead, x as a plus h, where a and h are both numbers. We just replace x with a plus h in our function, whatever it is. So we just write that here without a formula right now for uh, f. We write the output as f of a plus h. And we can conclude from that that the ordered pair there, x coordinate a plus h, the y coordinate would be f of a plus h. All right, we're gonna see this notation momentarily, but our two ideas here are familiar formula for slope and then how function values uh, tie into this. All right, with that out of the way, let's go back to the tangent line problem from which these ideas will be built upon. All right, so here's our standard graph that we drew earlier. And we're gonna start by trying to um, kind of answer this problem in, in some way. So we have our tangent line there. We're calling the point on the graph, it's x coordinate a. And what we just reviewed, the y coordinate would be f of a. We uh, plug our x coordinate into the function to get the y coordinate. 
All right, now earlier, when we're talking about the slope formula, we mentioned in order to apply that, you need two points. Well, here, there's only one point that our tangent line is passing through. That one point, A comma F of A, that the tangent line just touches. So we can't apply our slope formula. The slope formula requires two points. Here, we only have one. Well, we're gonna cheat. We're going to make or create a second point. And what we do is just go a short distance here in the sketch, we're going to go from x equals a, uh, small distance h to the right. If we start at a and go h units to the right, we end up at the x coordinate a plus h. We uh, just add. All right, and that would give me a second point on that graph. The x coordinate for this second point is a plus h, the y coordinate f of a plus h. All right, and now we have two points. So now we can apply our familiar slope formula. But what we're getting is not the slope of the tangent line, but this related concept called the secant line. So the tangent line is sketched there in red. The, uh, the secant line, I have it sketched here in black, passing through those, uh, those two points. So the two points are A comma F of A, and the second point, is a plus h comma f of a plus h. All right, now that we have two points, the x and y coordinates for each point, we can apply the slope formula. So here, pause the video, give yourself a few seconds to write that down. It's straightforward, provided you're comfortable with function notation. All right, ideally that went pretty quick, very straightforward. We have our y2 and y1 values as the function values, f of a plus h, and then f of a, we're gonna subtract those. And then our x coordinates, x2 and x1, are a plus h and a, respectively. All right, so if we apply our familiar slope formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, we get to here. Now I want to make sure you realize what this is the slope of. Uh, this is the slope of the secant line. Our goal is to find the slope of the tangent line. So bear with me, we'll, we'll be getting to that. We're going to use this result. Now if we just take a look at this algebraic expression, can we do anything with it without knowing a formula for f? Well, we can only do one simple thing, look in that denominator, the a's cancel out. They subtract out, a minus a is zero. So at best, without having a specific formula for the function f here, I, I just leave this written as f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. In your pre-calculus course, this expression or quantity is called the difference quotient. And you likely calculated that through uh, a few questions early on in your pre-calculus course. All right, this quantity represents the slope of the secant line. How do we relate this to slope of the tangent line? Well, let's draw our sketch again. Here we have the points uh, kind of separated by a large distance. So notice the, uh, the coordinates uh, on the x-axis, x equals a and a plus h. There is a large distance between them that distance between those uh, x coordinates we're calling h. All right, so our goal is to try to first uh, not worry about getting the exact slope for the tangent line. Here you can see the secant line and tangent line are kind of far apart. Can we do anything to make the secant line a little closer to the tangent line? Well, we can do one thing. We can let that second point get closer to the first. So notice if I just go backwards a little bit, here the two points are far apart. The secant line and tangent line are uh, kind of you know, not close at all. But as that second point gets closer, the secant line starts to level out and approach the tangent line. All right, so the distance h between those x coordinates is now a little smaller. Well, let's keep going. 
let's make that distance between those two points a little closer. And you can see, if we go back kind of in quick succession, as those two points get closer, the secant line approaches the tangent line. Now something's happening to the uh, distance between the x coordinates, we're calling that h. Let's flip back again, just so you can see it. Here's a large distance between them, so h is large. h gets smaller, h gets smaller again. So as that second point gets closer to the first, the distance between those x coordinates gets smaller. And as we continue that, h keeps getting smaller and smaller, approaching zero. And what we're introducing here is the central topic in calculus. Almost every idea in calculus and kind of mathematics, at least in the calculus sequence, is built off of something called a limit. And what we're going through here, doing kind of uh, successive calculations for uh, the familiar slope formula, as those two points get closer, that is the concept of a limit. Now, how do we make this precise? First off, we're going to notice as we let h get smaller, the slope of the secant line approaches the slope of the tangent line. And you can see that the, uh, the secant line in black starts to level out and approach, get closer to the red tangent line. All right, so let's just write down kind of the main results. Uh, we're kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but we're going to explain this very shortly within the next lecture. The first quantity there represents the slope of the secant line. That's what we uh, came up with a few minutes earlier. Now, I'm putting notation here for a limit that we haven't covered yet. You might have encountered it previously, but I want you to notice the slope of the secant line algebraically resembles the slope of the tangent line there. The only difference is the slope of the tangent line has this uh, process in front of it, the limit as h goes to zero. Now this is standard notation that we will be getting to in the next lecture, but I want to show you how we go from algebra and pre-calculus, familiar slope formula, to the first topic that we're going to start with in our course, which is a limit. And we see that here within this introduction. So this is kind of how we answer the tangent line problem. We start by finding an approximation. That's the secant line. So we start by finding the slope of the secant line, which is just an approximation. Then we make that approximation better. We do that by letting the second point approach the first algebraically. As a second point approaches the first, the distance between those x coordinates, h, gets smaller towards zero. And that's going to be uh, that expression written there for the slope of the tangent line, something that we'll review once we cover all aspects of limits that we'll get to. Okay, that kind of is the whole point of this introduction to take you from algebra and pre calculus topics to the very first conceptual uh, thing we'll learn about in calculus, which is here a limit. So we're left with this question at the end of the introduction, what is a limit? Well, that's going to be what we cover within the next few lectures. The whole reason we want to introduce limits is to really properly define what we mean by letting uh, one point approach the first, just exactly how we let the secant line approach or get closer to the tangent line. We'll develop everything related to limits within the next few lectures.